Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the first of four training tapes by the Wisconsin River Officials Association for the 21-22 basketball season. We're now a full week into a season. I'm sure many of you have had um, one or two or three games so far this year, and um, we've already got some great plays to talk about. Um, this season, is, is, I feel, is going to be one of the best ones in a long time with the fans back. Um, we're somewhat past COVID in high school sports, and we're not out of the woods yet, but we're getting there. Um, and, and it's overall, I think it's going to be a great year of high school basketball. My name is Cade Murray. Um, I'm out of lacrosse, and I'm the WROA's huddle administrator. And with that, I also create these training tapes. Um, again, we're really looking forward to this year, but we've already got some clips that we need to look through. Um, and we've got five good clips here today that are hopefully going to help you become better as an official. So, so quick disclaimers before we get into it. No clip is meant to call out, degrade, or make fun of one official or crew of officials. Nobody here is perfect that is watching this video that, that is an official in general. We all make mistakes. We all have situations happen in games that we may we may not know how to handle or, or may handle incorrectly, and that's okay. Um, as long as we learn from it and we get it right. So, so these, these clips are meant for you to learn and to be informed. It's not to take credit away from any official in this tape whatsoever. Um, and, and I have no expert either. Um, you know, I'm only in my, my third year of officiating. I've learned a lot. I still have a lot to learn, um, but, but making these, you know, hopefully helps me teach you guys some things that I have learned over the first week or so of the season. Um, so without any further ado, let's get right into it. On this first clip that we're going to have here, it's going to be a jump ball right out of the gate, first game of the season. And right away, the ball is going to go up and we're going to see a really hard foul here. Now, regardless, before we get into um, how we can handle it, excuse me for that, we want to first um, look at the possibility of upgrading this to an intentional or a flag or foul. We see that this is very, very hard contact. The girl goes to the floor right away. It's a tough call for us right out of the gate. Like I said, this is the first jump ball in the first, in, in the first action we see this season. And we already have a play like this on our hands and we got to be ready and know how to handle this right out the gate from the jump ball. Um, so if we look at, our definitions of an intentional foul. We see that it is a foul that is uh, that may or may not be premeditated and is not based solely off the severity of the act. And if you look at um, section D down here, you'll see that excessive contact with an opponent while the ball is live is part of the of the rule of the intentional foul. And if we look back at this play here, excuse me. We clearly see that as the ball goes up and the ball is being chased out of bounds, that this is this is excessive. This is not warranted. We can avoid this contact. So therefore, we think that we can definitely upgrade this to an intentional foul. And again, I'll just keep playing the clip as I'm talking. Um, but but this is this is like I said, this is very violent. Um, so what do we do? What is our process with the intentional foul? So when we have an intentional foul right out the gate with a jump ball, we are going to be shooting our two free throws. Our two free throws need to be attempted by team A number 32 who got fouled there. Um, if team A30 or if team A32 is unable to shoot those free throws because of injury, then her substitute shall be the one who attempts those free throws. After we shoot the free throws, we then have the throw in for the intentional foul. Now by rule, the possession arrow, since, the, since the, keep in mind, this is a loose ball play. No possession has yet been established on the arrow. Um, the, by rule, a possession arrow is set, can be set after non-common foul free throws. And this falls under that category. We're going to have a non-common foul in the form of an intentional foul. And we are going to attempt those free throws. Um, afterwards, 
Once the ball is at the disposal of the thrower, then the possession arrow is set and should be set towards team B. So the team in white here. The next thing I want to talk about with this clip is our court coverage. Um, the officials did not have a foul called on this play. Right here, when we see the contact occur, excuse me, when we see that this contact occurs, we have two officials looking right at this play right here, and we, and we don't have a foul called. To me, this is what we call a crew saver, okay? There is no doubt in our minds that this is a foul. This needs to get called. The official right here seems to have a pretty good look at, and this one does it as well. We can't defer and say my partner is going to get that in this situation. We have to get a whistle on this because this loses our credibility in the game, especially when you're looking right at it and the coach goes, why didn't you call that foul? And your explanation is going to be very tough versus explaining to the other team's coach why we called an intentional foul for this. Again, this is a great play to learn from. This is the first jump ball in the first game of the season. But we have to be ready to officiate right out the gate from a jump ball. On this next play, we're going to have a shot go up on the second shot attempt here in the video. And we're gonna have a hard foul by team red, team B right here, who is in red. Afterwards, we see that team A flings her elbow and we see a discussion going on amongst the crew of officials here about how we wanna proceed with this. Um, this is without a doubt is definitely um, excessive by the um, team A player in white. Um, we, without a doubt, also have a foul on team B for that hold there as she's going for the rebound. But if you see, if you watch the play again, after this, an elbow is swung there that is definitely not necessary. So because of this, we have the ability to upgrade this to a dead ball technical or a flagrant foul. Uh, I like the discussion that the calling official brings in. He sends the teams to their benches and continues to have a discussion with the crew. This is a great job, I think, by the crew of discussing this and um, talking about whether or not we can deem and we can upgrade this to a flagrant foul. Um, to reiterate, I'll go back here. We also have the flagrant foul definition is a personal or technical foul of a violent or excessive nature of which a technical non-contact foul which displays unacceptable contact. This is definitely violent and excessive. We, we don't need this elbow here. It's not warranted. Um, and I, again, I like that the crew comes together and they talk about this. So our next question is how are we going to administer this? The first thing that we should do is that we should bring either one official goes to one coach, the other official goes to the other coach and the calling official goes to the table and we talk to the coaches about we're going to have what we're going to have, or we bring the coaches together and we talk to them about what we are going to have. Um, in this case, the crew sends the calling official to the table. The official there with the ball is going to talk with the coach and tell him what he has. And then the other official is going to, to the other coach is going to tell him what, what he has. It's important when we have discussion with a coach that we take them out of the huddle. It, it's not seen on this video, but the other official talked to the coach in his huddle. We wanna bring the coach out of the huddle there. We wanna have a one-on-one -on -one coach talk with that coach. We don't want to have a, um, you know, we don't wanna have the bench in there chirping at the official and stuff like that. Um, in this case, um, we did not have bonus. So we just shoot the technical free throws and then we proceed. But if we have bonus, and this is crucial that we talk about this, if we have bonus, we need to shoot free throws in the order of which they occur. So in this case, we first have our foul by red number 42 on white number 45. If we're in the bonus, we're going to shoot those bonus free throws. Oops, excuse me. After we shoot those bonus free throws, we then need to go and we need to shoot the technical foul free throws, which can be attempted by any um, team B player. 
because this is a bonus situation, even though we call the technical on number 45 for team A, number 45 still shoots the free throws, unless this is the second technical foul in which team A number 45 has received in which they would be disqualified. In that case, team A number 45 substitute will shoot the bonus free throws. And then again, after we shoot the bonus free throws, we will shoot the technical foul free throws. And then we will have the throw in for the technical foul, which will be given to team B. Overall, the crew handles this very, very well. This is a great job of communicating and communicating with the coaches and handling this accordingly. On this play, we're gonna have a very layered play here is we're gonna have an elevator screen and then we're going to have a foul call by the defense for a push through as a three point attempt is shot in which it does go in. There are multiple elements to this play that we can discuss here and a lot that we can take away from here. It's not a play that happens very often, but it's definitely one that we need to be ready for. So first let's talk about what we do have. We do have a push through on the defender for on the screener as the three point shot is being attempted. This is when the foul occurs and the three point shot is being attempted. Because, and I'll say team A is in the white and team B is in the blue, because team A is already in the motion of the shot, this basket will count. Because team A was already in the motion as the fouls occurred, if we were to take that shot away, that, would, that, cause, that can cause some dilemma as if that foul was intentional in order to not get the shot off, et cetera. Um, so the crew gets together here and the, the clip doesn't show it all the way through, but the center and the trail get together here and discuss what they have, um, which is a foul by team B on the screener. We do count the basket. And then because this was actually the um, seventh team foul by team B, we're going to shoot bonus free throws. It's important that we get the right um, shooter for the bonus free throws, which in this case is going to be the screener, not the girl who attempted the three point shot. Um, one other thing that we can talk about is the screen itself. As we watch this play develop, we do notice that the screener does not really give ample time and distance for the defender to react. This could be called an illegal screen by RC mainly because the trail already has something going on in his primary as that screen is being set. This is something that the center can come in and can ship for a, uh, a legal screen. Now, if we were to call an illegal screen on this play and the same motion happens of the shot, that ball needs to be out of her hands and in the air for that to count. If she is still in the motion of the shot, that basket will not count because it is a foul by the offense. It's a very, very layered play that we have here. It's never a bad idea to talk about this in your pregame, how you will handle this and how you are going to um, administer this. And it's good to have a conversation on the floor, which again, these officials did. It's just not shown in the video. Um, Overall, this was administered correctly by the crew. And these are plays that don't happen very often, but we need to be ready for them to happen at any moment in time, especially with the rising popularity of elevator screens. On this play, we're gonna have a, um, a play at the rim off a drive from the left side. Oops, my apologies. And it, it's, it looks initially to be a block charge play. It's a very tough play for us to officiate right out the gate, especially because we have the drive coming from C's primary and the lead is opposite. Now, looking purely at the contact alone, we see that she slides in and it's very debatable of if she establishes legal guarding position. In my opinion, in order to and this is in my opinion, this is, is the rule. The rule is that 
the defender must face the offensive player's torso to establish legal guardian position. Once she does that, she can move laterally. She can fall back. She does not necessarily have to be set. There, the, the narrative of that we have to be set to take a charge is false. Based off of that rule of legal guardian position, she can slide. She can do whatever she wants as long as she is not impeding the offensive player. In my personal opinion, I do think this is a blocking foul because I do not believe that the defender obtains legal guardian position before the contact is made. It appears that she slides in late and that this is a blocking foul. I can see the argument for a charge. Um, we see this different from every perspective as an official. This is the film's perspective and what the C's perspective was. Um, and I would not be opposed to calling it a charge either. But what we definitely do have is a foul. Um, I, I heard a great statement from a friend that if we if we don't have a whistle on this play, we're 100% wrong. But if at least if we have a block or a charge, we're 50% wrong. And I think that's a great way to go with this here versus a no call. Um, if we talk about mechanics, we see that this does come out of the C's primary. And the C does a very good job of following the drive and following his primary defender. Um, we see that the lead rotates as the drive is happening. And that is very tough for us to do because that, that is difficult to officiate as we are moving. If the lead stays put and officiates the secondary defender, um, I feel that is almost better than if we are moving as we are trying to call that play. If the lead is over, before that occurs and it does appear that he is trying to get over before um, that drive initiates it's just that that drive initiates right as he is rotating um, then we can pick up our secondary defenders much easier the block charge is the most difficult play to officiate in basketball and picking up our secondary defenders from our primaries like the lead official should do here um, will help in officiating those block charge plays. It's a very good play to look at. Um, we'll have many block charges over the course of the season. And it's always good to look at these, these plays um, and think to yourself, what can, what could I do to um, get a whistle on this play? What do I think the right call should be? Our last play is a very, very later play with a technical foul sequence. Um, we will see that there's about nine seconds left on the clock here and the ball is being swung around. And you're gonna see that team B loses the ball here. And it appears that team A goes down on her knee for a travel. As we can see, the trail official has a foul on team B and the, uh, the team B coach is not happy. In this case, we actually have the bonus in effect, in effect here. So we're going to need, need to shoot free throws um, for, for this period. Um, as you can see here um, by, by this play, um, since this is the expiration of the half, we, we have to shoot these, these free throws um, before the teams go into the locker room. Um, now, as, as, we, um, as we go on here, we make sure we get the right shooter. We report the foul. Um, and as we are lining up and discussing, we almost attempt these free throws at the wrong basket because this is in the first half of the game. Um, good catch by RC here that are noticing this and we almost have the correctable error. And, um, and, and we shoot the free throws at the correct basket. As I was talking there, a technical foul was administered to the team B coach, which makes it all the more complicated for us. Um, quick note here on the technical, we see after the conversation is over and the team coach is walking away, then the technical is issued. I don't know what was said, and I am not going to argue a technical foul being called, but generally when a coach is walking away, we wanna, we wanna end the conversation there and not escalate it. Um, unless this coach said something um, that, that really warranted this technical foul as he was walking away, we just want to leave it be 
um, when 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 they are walking away. Um, like I said, I am not I am not going to argue the technical foul being called. I trust this official's judgment for calling the technical foul. This is a college game, so these are college officials. Um, so as we are attempting these um, free throws. Since this technical foul has been called after the buzzer has sounded, keep in mind, as soon as the buzzer sounds, we are in the second half. So while we are going to shoot these bonus free throws, we are going to attempt those technical foul free throws at the beginning of the second half when the teams come out, not at the end of the first half. Um, and again, it, it, it's a... Um, it's a very strange situation, but one that we need to be prepared for. Um, and the last thing I want to touch on is the, um, the possession arrow. Make sure you tell your table that the throw in to start the second half, because we had that technical as after the buzzer sounded, the throw in for the, um, for the technical will occur at the beginning of the second half. And the, um, and the possession arrow should not change if it is in favor of team A, um, in which case this was in favor of team A. Um, so make sure you're checking that possession arrow and making sure that you know that um, the arrow does not switch when we have that throw in. Okay, that's, that's all I have. Um, I hope you learned something from this. You were able to take something away from these clips. Um, and from the from us at the WR way, we wish you a fantastic season. We're just getting into it. We've already had some great discussion, um, and, and we can't wait for the season ahead. Just a few general reminders: make sure you keep your schedule updated on the WIA website, um, and be confirming with your athletic directors for your game time. Um, you never know with COVID; things can still be getting canceled, so we want to make sure we keep that updated. Um, make sure you are always having good pregames. Um, that, that is going to be very crucial for your success as an official um, and as a crew of officials. And lastly, and most importantly, have fun. Um, happy Thanksgiving to you all. Enjoy your time with your families. Um, and let's get geared up for a great December season.